Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today we have a very special guest on the show. I'd like to welcome to the show, Allison Steele. Hello, Allison. Gavin, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Really excited to have you here. So, Allison, you've been at Wizards for a long time now. What exactly is it that you do here at Wizards? You're right. I've been at Wizards for about seven years, and for the last two of them, I've been a digital product manager for Magic Online. Uh, so what that means is a lot of the, the uh, high-level strategic decisions uh, they go through my team. So Allison, today we, ha we have you here to talk about something brand new and really exciting, and that is Supreme Draft. This is a new kind of drafting coming to Magic Online, and I would love for you to talk about how it came to be and what exactly it is, and then we'll get a taste of it. But first, uh, go ahead and tell us all about it. So the way that Supreme Draft came about is like the initial genesis. I'm gonna tell this Rosewater style. Uh, I'm sitting at home and I'm trying to figure out uh, how my wife and I can draft. The two things we most enjoy, Draft and Commander, aren't really optimized for two players. So I thought, okay, well, if I can't simulate the effects of another drafter, what if I didn't have to? What if I just took a pack and I, 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 I took my pick and that was it. I just set the pack, rest of the pack aside. Uh, I had my pick and then I took the next pack and I made my pick and that was it. And then we're, uh, we're talking... I don't know, a few weeks later in the Mikko pit, I, I just pitched my, okay, here's this draft where you just take the one card and then you move on. And people seem to, to like it. So flash forward, the playtesting is going super well. We end up getting people from other departments coming in, making ex excuses to join Magic Online playtests for the first time in ever. This was really a team effort. Like we iterated on it. You know, one of the team members suggested, and this was, I think, the, the, the change that really made it sing, was rather than have, you know, 36 packs, one pick each, what if we had 18 packs and two picks each? What we're going to be drafting today is the Ravnik Stravaganza. That sounds awesome. Ravnik Stravaganza. I'm excited. It is an extravaganza of all things Ravnica guilds. You're going to get 18 packs, and uh, all of the packs are from the guild sets of Ravnica. War of the Spark is great, not what we're doing here. There's going to be at least two packs of each of the eight sets, and then there's going to be two other random packs. And you're going to go through them in whatever order the, the, the game presents them to you. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the whole pack in front of you, and then you're going to take two cards. And you repeat this, you're going to see all eight sets, you're going to see 18 packs, you're going to make 36 picks, and then you're going to build a normal limited deck. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to crack open 18 packs, grab two cards out of each of them. They're all going to be from the various Ravnica sets, and we're going to build a sweet deck. Let's hop right into it. Okay, awesome. So it looks like we are going to be taking Dragon's Maze first. Kind of a funny one to start with, given that, um, given that it's the combined of all the guilds. I wonder what we're going to take here. There's some good options. We could, we could go for... Um, this uh, the spike gesture and go for kind of aggressive strategy. We could take this nice Simic rare. I don't know, I'm kind of tempted by the rare. What do you think? I really like Karaz de Gorgon. It served me really well in that block. Uh, I don't know how all the plus one plus one counter synergies are gonna work, but if you're in Simic, you might be able to pull that off. So maybe it's a Voril and, and the Gorgon. Yeah, let's take these two. I always like the little black, green, blue kind of gameplay. So we're gonna grab these and submit. And now we can see the order of all the packs that we're going to be opening, right? Yeah, if you click on the booster icon. Oh, there it is. Perfect. So we know that we're going, this might be especially relevant for Ravnica, right? Because you will um, be walking through uh, various guilds which will have certain color combinations in them. So that's great to know. There's a few art pieces here, but that's just uh, missing here. That's just my screen. Don't worry about it. You'll see them in the final version. Uh, okay, so we took Voral of the Hulklade and Corrosive the Gorgon first. Coming up next, we get 15 brand new cards. Normally, you would get much fewer, but here we can see all of them again. I'm always tempted by Galvanic Arc. I mean, I know it doesn't really fit our other colors, but that's a super exciting one to have. There's Lockstone Hierarch. Lockstone Hierarch, which is, of course, um, phenomenal. Uh, Elves of Deep Shadow, just a nice one, Mana Accelerator. Yeah, uh, I really like, let's see, there are we... auras throughout the whole thing, so Bramble Elemental is kind of tempting. I'm I'm really tempted to stick with the colors that we've got because, the, you know, those three colors together are relatively powerful. They do a lot of the things that I usually like. Yeah, we can also just move on in on uh, Simic, Golgari, and... Um... 
and Demir. That's always always a nice one. And plus, you know, there's no signals to worry about here. We're seeing new packs every single time. So uh, it's not like we're going to get cut off out of nowhere. We'll be able to find the cards. So yeah, yeah, sure. Let's try, let's try the plan of Bramble Elemental and Elves of Deep Shadow. Let's take those and see what, see what happens. Boop. Okay. Now we're on to pack three, which is going to be um, Ravnica Allegiance. Okay. So, you know, we got, got some more interesting options. There's a good black removal spell here in Grotesque Demise. That goes right into our kind of Simic with Black deck. Um, there's some various creatures. Um, there's also a guild gate, you know, mana fixing, really important that and open the gates could be really important, especially if we're drafting Ravnica and we end up with some, some kind of wonky five color deck. Yep. I, um, I think it's for that reason. I really like the open the gates. Yeah. And there's gates in, you know, a bunch of these packs too. So that makes a lot of sense. And then I think I'm going to take the grotesque demise. Just a removal spell will basically always be good in our, in our black deck. So. Let's go with let's go with these guys. All right, submit them. Boop. And just like that, we are on to the next pack. We're in Gate Crash now. Ooh, now here is a rare I'm interested in taking. The Sepul the Sepulchral 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 Primordial. I was trying to remember that by uh, Brian Kibler talking about it on stream. I did not succeed today. So uh, we're gonna take this Primordial for sure. That's gonna go great. Um, in yeah. Deck. We're so gonna you're gonna wanna it. click it. Right yeah. now, it's got a, a teal border and says auto select. Once you click it, it's reserved. Ah. Excellent. So we take the primordial, and then we could take like the Gore Clan Rampager, which is you know if we end up going red, could be nice. Or we could take the um, the Scab Clad and Charger. But I'm a little uh, partial to the um, either the Oculus, which is pretty strong in this kind of deck as a two mana one three that can pump. Or the Prophetic Prism. Once again, just that mana fixing is super nice. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of common mana fixing in these sets and not a lot of great two-drop creatures. Uh, so given those two, I kind of like the Oculus more. Oculus it is. Let's do it. Fits right into our strategy. I think it's kind of cool that we were able to kind of basically take you know, some colors right off the bat and just know we are going to get them, right? We're like, we're going to grab these two and we're just going to force it. Like, is it right to force a uh, green, black, blue? I don't know, but we're doing it. And that, that's kind of cool. And one thing to note is that you've got that extended timer. So, you know, you're not picking, you don't have forever to make a choice, but you've got 15 cards each time to read. So you've got over two minutes per pick. Yeah, which is tons of time to read through your cards and think about it or even talk with a friend like we're doing about what you, you might want to take. Uh, so here, I, I really like the Birds of Paradise. I mean, that talk about mana fixing, mana ramp, all star. Birds is, is always just just great. Um, and then, you know, here, I mean, maybe it's just my original Ravnica speaking to me too much, but Civic Wayfinder is the card I'm tempted to take. It's uh, going to fix our mana, which is great. It'll, it essentially draws you a card. And by taking this, I feel okay potentially opening up uh, other colors in the future. Yeah, uh, I think that makes a ton of sense. Uh between those two cards and the open the gates, uh, I feel like we've got a pretty good uh, level of color fixing if we don't go into a fourth or fifth color. I'm not quite brave enough here to take the lightning helix. That would be uh, quite the commitment. <laughs> uh, but those two seem seem like a good start. Okay, so uh, now we're back over to guilds of Ravnica. It's kind of cool. We hop across all the Ravnica sets. This is kind of fun. Um, what are we going to take this time? Hmm. Beast Whisperer is so tempting. That's yeah, so the Whisperer. Yeah, it's hard to say no to a card that lets you cantrip through your creatures, especially in a format like Ravnica, where um, card advantage is often often the champion. So I think I'm going to take this Beast Whisperer. Plus, it's, it's a rare. It's so hard to say no. I have to say no to so many rares doing this anyway. Um, after that, I could see the Gateway Plaza. Once again, just some more great mana fixing. I could see the Siege Worm. I mean, that's a Ravnica classic. That was in the original Ravnica set, too, as just a nice big creature you can drop down. What do you think? Uh, I like I like those options. I also like the Pitiless Gorgon. Uh, it's relatively cheap. Uh, and also Death Touch. Uh, there's a ton of big ground creatures going on. Uh, it's a, it, sw it swings in for some Sammy unblockability, plus it'll trade with anything. Yeah, that, that's a good point. It's also nice and flexible on the mana, right? Which is, yeah. which is pretty good. I think, you know, in Ravnica sets, I'm always just on the plan of let's, let's take mana and figure it out later. So I'm going to grab this Gateway Plaza along with the Beast Whisperer, and we'll see, see what happens. Um, once again, there's no one, to, no one to compete with our picks for, so. That sounds great. 
Uh, okay. Ooh. Now I'm wondering about a third color. Is it time for red to maybe grab the Scab Clan giant right here? Mm. Or, um... Or you take the Zertrod Druid? What do you think? I don't know. I think there's a bunch of good options here. Uh, I really like Turn and Burn. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, we could grab the Scab Clan Giant and this Turn and Burn and just uh, start grabbing some red options, too. I mean, we have the Man Fix, and we've got Gateway Plaza, Open the Gates, which finds Gateway Plaza, Birds mm -hmm. of Paradise, um, Civic Wayfinder. I think we can do it. Let's, yeah. let's be brave. Let's do it. Let's be brave. Here we go. We'll, we'll draw our mana. It'll be fine. Okay, moving on to um, Guilds of Ravnica, oh, excuse me, Ravnica Allegiance. Uh, okay, we've got Sphinx of Foresight. That's a pretty good pick as a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flyer with a bonus ability if it starts in our opening hand. Um, there's also this Gruel Beastmaster, which could be pretty good. Um, grab this Rampaging Ren. Which one? Sorry. Uh, yeah, we already have Overrun Torn. Uh, uh, Carnival Carnage is also a cool option now that we're in red. Yeah, just like a way to make him pitch some cards or ping off a creature. That's not too shabby. You're right. You're right. You know, looking, looking at our deck down here, it's a... Uh, it doesn't have much of a curve identity yet, so I'm not too worried about filling holes in the curve. Hmm. Yeah, I could see I could see a few a few different picks here. Guess uh sure we can take this we can take your suggestion of the Carnival Carnage. We'll see how that turns out. So, Why not? I just like I just like taking colors. Okay, so we move from well, uh Ravnica Allegiance on to Oh, what? Yeah, one thing to note. Uh, okay. What's the one thing to note, Allie? Approximately 20% fewer picks in Supreme Draft as compared to a regular draft. So uh, it's important to not uh, spend too many picks uh, on potentials or hypotheticals right that's a great point yeah you have a little bit less room to explore but because you're getting the first picks out of every pack hopefully uh that'll work out okay for you um okay well here this is a card that i remember never passing if i back in original dissension that's twin strike which is five mana to kill two creatures if you have no cards in your hand that's a pretty strong one uh it's also hard for me to pass up a signet i mean this is even on color for whatever extent saying on color is reasonable given that we're four colors currently um but uh, this is where my mind leads, is the Twin Strike and the Signet. What do you think? I I am right with you. It's hard to pass up that kind of value. Yeah, I mean, Twin Strike. I don't know if it's still good, if it's going to be good in this format, but man, casting that card back in the day was a blowout city. Oh, Simic Sky Swallower, my old friend. Yes, well, that's this, this card was one of the best cards you could open up in Dissension originally. 7 mana, 6-6 six, six, Flying Trample Shroud is n extremely difficult to deal with. And in our deck, which I think like many decks in this format will end up being some kind of long game, long game strategy, um, this is going to fit in really well. Yep, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and it's also really strong against that Seal of Doom right there, which your opponents will probably have access to. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, so I'm going to take the Sky Swallower. The, then the question here is, you, we take the removal spell, which is, of course, a classic three-mana removal spell, can't go too wrong, or something which, if you're newer, you might not gravitate to quite as much, which is this Bounce Land. Um, these Bounce Lands are known to be incredibly powerful. They let you cut lands out of your decks in some cases. They're basically like drawing a card when you play them. Um, there was a point in Ravnica where I would almost never pass a Bounce Land. Um, I think they're still probably pretty good, too, in, in this format. I would expect so. I, like, I don't, I don't see anything that beats Smith Growth Chamber here. 
I mean, the Seal of Doom is close for me, but the thing is, especially if we're going four colors and we're taking a bunch of first picks, we're definitely going to have enough playables. That's not going to be a problem. And so given that, it just makes a lot of sense to me to um, snag the the land and know that we'll have enough playables in the end. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to grab the Sky Swallower and the Simic Growth Chamber. Nobody can stop me and yeah. uh, move on here. The other nice thing about taking the land is that it lets you fit more of your draft picks into your deck. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so here we've got another gate. If we, speaking of mana fixing, there's a potential kind of kind of derpy, but you know, till the service will two drop, we could take. Um, there's Goblin Crater Maker. If we think we're gonna have enough early red to make it happen, if we're very ambitious, we could grab the Artful Takedown too. That could be could be pretty nice. I, we don't really have that many early game blue cards either, but we might have the mana fixing to to make it all come together. I think I like I, I like this takedown. Yeah. I like the takedown. Uh, I'm also a fan of Disdainful Stroke. Yeah. I think there are going to be a lot of big spells that you're going to want to counter. Oh, that's true. Right. A lot of people ramping with Signets and stuff like that. Okay. I was thinking about the Guild Gate, but I could be convinced on the Stroke. We can, we can give that a roll. There'll be, there are probably more gates coming up, right? We can look at our upcoming packs here. Oh, yeah. Look at all those gates. Tons of gates. We've got three Guild of Ravnica packs, a two Ravnica Allegiance packs still left. No problem. Let's grab these. All right. Now we're looking at uh, Guilds of Ravnica again. Hmm. Well, we probably are not casting this Night Veil Predator. That's no, that's gonna be a, a, a gosh. I always want to. This, this pack, pack is, is not as not as great for us here. Um, there's this Mentor of the Legion, but we're not white. That's the one color we aren't. So there isn't a yeah. ton we could do. We could speculatively grab this Guild Gate in case we do end up moving into white. Um, I don't know. What What do you think? Uh, th this is not a terribly exciting pack. Yeah, this is. I mean, the best cards in this pack are all white, and then this blue, blue, black, black card that we'll never be able to cast. Yeah. I. Th we don't have a ton of creatures. We've got uh, twelve creature cards right now, so I'm less inclined to the rise on lurcher than I would be in other circumstances. Mm-hmm. Maybe we just grab this is this is like a kind of a, a terrible first pick. Maybe we just grab this Vidalkin Mesmerist because we might just need two drops at the end of the day. Although I can't imagine that's going to make our deck. That would be a pretty pretty big stretch. It, it actually wouldn't surprise me. There are, like we don't have a ton of two drops yet. Um, I, maybe okay. it's the Mesmerist and the Vapors. Take the Vapors. Maybe we could also take the Angel just because you know we've got what we've got. Uh, seven packs left. I don't know, maybe we open up a white bomb and end up moving into uh, white. So if you look in the upper left corner, it says booster 12 of 18. Uh, so we're two thirds of the way through our draft right now. I yeah. Well, well, we got a few seconds left. So Too late. We're, we're, just, we're just grabbing these. We're doing it. Okay. Let the Legion get, get on All the right. squad. Well, let's let's make right. this work. Are we going to play it? Probably not. But, uh, you know, whatever. We, we have, now have the option. Uh, all right, now we are back to Ravnica Allegiance. Um, ooh, well, we've got another Grotesque Demise. This is a pretty good mm -hmm. removal pick here. We also have Titanic Brawl, and I know we are light on creatures, um, but that's totally a reasonable option we could take. Um, there's also this Mirror March. Is this card good? I don't know. It's probably not good, right? No, I, I don't know. I've never actually played with it. I remember it was really good when it cost three mana um, in the draft, draft I played in, but uh, I don't think it costs three mana anymore. It costs twice as much as the time I cast it. So. Um, yeah, it definitely seems less powerful now. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna grab this this fight spell. You know, just get some good removal. We can also look at the skitter eel, I guess, if we need creatures. But I'm just yeah. gonna take the two two removal spells and, and call it good. Okay, now we're on to Ravnica Allegiance again. I, I think I can count the number of times I've passed an applied biomancy on one hand. Uh, it's yeah. it's not great, but I don't care. It's so versatile. It's so versatile. Given that our decks are not super tempo-y, I don't know if it's going to be as awesome. The card, the card I'm maybe most excited about, although I know it's blue-blue, is the Senate Griffin. This has a 4-mana 3-2 flyer. Um, and maybe this gate, having another gate for open the gates to find could be really, really nice. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna snag snag these. We're gonna have enough playables uh, with all our colors anyway. So yep. Grab these, grab these folks. Oh yes, a uh, guild pact. One of my favorite favorite old sets here. Okay, Angel of Despair. Uh, I don't. The odds that we splash for this Light of the Legion and this Angel of Despair are getting increasingly small. I gotta say, so probably oh. probably not that one. Taking um, that Orzhov signet might help. Yeah, the Orzhov signet could help. We, we could get there. Um, is it Chronarch though? This is this is a card. It's hard for me to say no to. Five mana, two two. How yeah. many targets does it have? We've got Twin Strike. We've got Turn Burn. Ooh, that's true. Two grotesque demises. I, yep. I think I, I think this I, is a Chronarch is going to be doing just fine. I think fine. that makes sense. And then I'm actually tempted to take the Signet here. I mean, even though we're, we're not white, just the two mana mana accelerant is traditionally really good in these kind of formats, especially when we're trying to ramp into five and six and seven drops down here. So mm -hmm. I'm going to snag these and say no to the Angel of Despair. All right, three packs left. We don't have a lot of creatures from Molder Hulk, so that one's a little sketchy, but it, it could still be good. I mean, it's, it's a powerful card. Wow, a lot of white cards again. Not a lot for, for us here. I'm going to be a little sad if we take two first pick of Elkin Mesmerus. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's the Wario copy, which also is a little sad to take, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am equally wary of this uh, Okapi. Um, uh, well, I guess we'll take... We do have a bunch of Cygnus, though. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to take this Molder Hulk, because maybe we'll, there's a version of this deck where we'll, where we'll play it. And I'll grab this Okapi and see what happens. I mean, you have to get your, your creatures, your cheap creatures somewhere. Oh, man, another Lightning Helix. Wild. Well, okay, so here we've got Dream Lease, which is basically a control magic, and it takes a lot for me to pass a 5-mana control magic, so I'm going to take that. And then, uh, just uh, as a signet, as a man who loves signets, I'm going to take this Demir signet to cast my Primordial and Sky Swallower faster. Although, oh man, Boros Garrison. Well, hold on, hold on. Ooh, now, think, now things are getting trickier. My eyes almost went past it there for a second. It's another Bounce Land. Ooh, that's, that's tempting. Well, red is a splash, and we're not in white at all. So I'm, I like the signet over the Bounce Land here. Over the bounce. All right, well, but, I, I could I could be tempted to take. I, I've played a lot of off color bounce lands in my day, but we'll just uh, let us know in the comments below what, what you would have taken. Uh, I'll just take these two, and we're on to uh, to our last pack. And woo, foiled lunar primordial. I made I made this this one. Oh. Man, if we had taken all these white rares, we would have something. Uh, we'd have I guess a lot of double white rares. I don't really know what would have besides that. Um, this grizzly spectacle seems like the, the no brainer. It's a four mana removal spell that kills off anything. That's great. Mm -hmm. Um. Wow. Yeah, let's take this Grizzly Spectacle, and uh, I don't. I don't really know if anything else here is going to make our deck. I think maybe this Arrows of Justice. There's like a, a sideways Ooh. chance. Yeah, we've got uh, 18 creatures now. We probably don't need to just take a creature to have a creature. Bam! So now we have all of our all of our stuff, and. Um, this is the part where we d would normally make a deck. I'm gonna skip past that process here, but you can let you can let me know in the comments what uh, what version of this deck you would have built. And it was definitely a lot of fun getting to draft such a wide variety of uh, of fun wrapping stuff. All of my pro tour experience is judging, and you were obviously uh, playing at that level for quite some time. So getting to see, you know, your decision making was really cool. All right, so Supreme Draft is launching this Wednesday with Ravnica Stravaganza. What else can we expect from it in the future? What we've got. Uh, planned is we've got this week of Ravnik Stravaganza, uh, and then after that is a week of uh, Modern Horizons Supreme Draft. Now it's just one set, so all 18 uh, packs are going to be Modern Horizons. I'm really excited to see what decks get drafted uh, and how people take uh, that format. We, we've got other spotlight cubes and stuff after that. Uh, but we are going to come back to Supreme Draft at least once later in the year. Uh, we've got uh, a, a Supreme Draft Chaos version uh, coming later in the year. I just got to say, on a personal level, this is really, really exciting. Uh, and I hope that uh, you, know, you had fun and that uh, all of your watchers are going to have fun as well. Thanks for coming on the show, Allison. 
Here's the final card pull from the draft. Feel free to take a look at it and make the best deck you can and post it in the comments. Supreme Draft goes live on Magic Online on Wednesday. Go give it a try. You got this.